Thank you so much. Now, there is a term that I heard, uh, uh, 5-MeO therapy. Can you say something about that, like doing, uh, doing it as a therapy? Well, in the way that I like to characterize it is that I do say that 5-MeO-DMT is a form of, um, I call it non-dual energetic therapy. Another term I use is reality therapy or just another way to put it would be ego therapy. Um, so most therapies with psychedelics, what they're really doing is they're engaging the ego and allowing the construction of new relationships between different aspects of the ego. So for example, you were sexually abused by your parents when you were a child and you go into your mushroom journey or your MDMA journey and you're experiencing maybe a new level of understanding of, oh, they were coming from a confused or wounded or hurt place. I can extend forgiveness to them. I can still love myself. I can release the trauma that I've experienced around this event. And then you come out of that potentially feeling better. Right? So there's a lot of applications for overcoming depression, anxiety, PTSD, trauma, things like that. But most of those are just, again, sort of a reorganization of these different elements of the ego, who you think your parents are versus you, versus the experience that you had and the trauma that you had from it. Whereas if we're using 5-MeO-DMT, we're actually allowing the possibility that we're not trying to actually make the ego better in its relationship to these things. We're going to get the ego completely out of the way. And what happens then is that the body starts to naturally process traumas and residual energies all on its own that it doesn't need anybody in the driver's seat. It doesn't need the ego there. So uh, uh, an analogy with this would be when we go to sleep at night and when we go into dreamless, deep sleep, the body actually is able to reset during that time period mm -hmm. and renew and heal. And it doesn't have anything to do with the person, with the ego, right? The body's going to do that all on its own. And it mm -hmm. only has the opportunity to do that when we go into deep, dreamless sleep versus when we are in REM dreaming sleep, the ego is there and it is constructing a virtual reality. And then the ego and the psyche is trying to process different emotional or situational realities within dreams. So it's still happening dualistically, okay? Mm -hmm. um, which also is necessary for a healthy human being. But it's the deep sleep that actually provides the greatest healing opportunity. And this is why if somebody is really sick, we say you want to get as much sleep and rest as possible because that's going to allow your body to heal faster. And it's not because of anything you're doing. It's because you're getting out of the way. So 5-MeO functions in that sort of capacity where when we get the egoic structure out of the way, the body will process all of this, and it will process the emotions, it will process the residuals, it will process the traumas, and it does it without the person needing to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And then as the ego comes back, then it will find, oh, now I'm freed of this, this overwhelming depression I've been having for the past 10 years or whatever it may be. Um, so it can then allow the person to come to a greater state of clarity of how those dysfunctional patterns got created in the first place and empowers them to choose not to engage in them in the future. So it really does, it changes someone's egoic identity and it also has the potential to cure a lot of the existential problems of the ego. So the ego mm -hmm. is what allows us to say, who am I? What is this? Where am I? What's going on? Who's in charge? What am I supposed to do? What's right? What's wrong? What's good? What's bad? And then 
the ego spends a lot of its life looking to answer those questions or it turns mm. to religion or it turns to politics or it turns to culture and society to answer those questions and then say, am I following the things that everybody else thinks and does that make me good or whatever? So it can provide this sort of non-dual therapy in the sense that if you get to directly experience yourself as God, um, participating in any kind of organized religion becomes really problematic because it's like, uh, religion, that's a construct of the ego. I'm not really interested. Also, the ego is tends to be pretty afraid of dying. Um, but this is a process of essentially having an ego death and of dying. And so it can really cure people of actually being afraid of dying. And it doesn't mean people are like, yeah, I want to die. But it's like, oh, I've, I think I've been through the process. And it's actually pretty cool on the other end of that. Mm -hmm. So it can, in a sense, it can cure a lot of the existential anxieties of the ego and can make, it, make the ego more resilient so that people are less prone to just buying into belief systems or mythologies or cultural relativities. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then you are less susceptible to being manipulated by religion or by culture or by politics. So it actually creates a more resilient individual. So I do mm -hmm. think that there's lots of therapeutic potential there. Yeah. And because it can release trauma and depression and anxiety and things like that, that it's something that a lot of research institutes are now looking at because um, it might do it in a profound way that's easier to work with than, say, um, a six hour mushroom journey. Like, well, you could have, you can be in and out with five MEO in 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, so they are looking at it as a kind of therapeutic tool. And even one area that some research institutes are looking at now is can they produce a non psychedelic derivative of five MEO DMT that does not produce a psychedelic or non dual experience, but also can relieve anxiety, depression, PTSD, mm. um, and they're doing research with mice <laughs> mm, um, wow. around that. And that's, it's kind of questionable about whether, because I do think that the, the therapeutic action of 5-MeO-DMT, I do think is dependent on the non-dual release mm. that it produces. So yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a bit skeptical. And I've actually contacted one of these research institutes and I've sent them an email saying, please come on my podcast and talk about it because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm interested, but we need to talk about it. <laughs> 